that's the reason why we need a new paradigm and we need a way for the framework to support it so that you are not compelled to wait inside the method for that thing to return. Okay? Just why? This is where reactive programming comes in. Okay? Here's how this thing looks in reactive programming. Right? I'm going to give you the code. Whatever we did earlier, right? That complicated code. Here is what this looks like. Okay? It's okay if this doesn't make sense. I'm just giving you a glimpse, all right? This is a teaser trailer for what's coming, but then it'll make sense by the end. So what you have here is a get user, and then you're combining it with something else, okay? And then you're mapping it with a combination, and then you're returning that. Notice the return type is no longer user. It's something called mono of user, right? Again, I will explain what that is. Again, this is just a this is just a glimpse of what's coming. So this is reactive, and not only does this do those two calls in parallel, the get user and get user preference is happening in parallel, but then it's also not taking an extra thread for this thing to respond. If let's say one of these were slow, right? The earlier model would have used a thread waiting for this thing to return, but this model does not use a thread waiting for this thing to return. And that's the beauty of it, okay? Now, what's different here? It is, in my opinion, much simpler, okay? Much simpler than the manual concurrent way. You might disagree because this code is new to you, but once you get familiar with this thing, it'll definitely seem much simpler. You can understand that, you can understand this, and then it's, you know, objectively a simpler way, right? Without understanding, things might seem complex, even though they are simple, can't help that. But once you are familiar with the active programming, this is definitely simpler. It also has what's referred to as reusable declarative patterns, right? A few reusable flexible functions that you can combine and use in various different ways, in various powerful ways. And this is why reactive programming has become so popular because not only does it make it easy for you to do the right thing, it makes it easy for you to kind of use your knowledge to kind of accelerate your application of your skills, right? You can kind of you basic some, you, I'm going to teach you some basic operators, basic paradigms. You're just going to use apply, use and apply again and again and again, and you can get a whole lot of different things achieved, right? You don't have to do, learn a lot of stuff. All right. So this is the, you know, this is what's different in the reactor programming paradigm, right? You don't have to deal with the manual effort of, okay, do this and do that. It's more declarative, right? It's less imperative. So this is uh, the first de part of the definition that we tackled earlier, right? Declarative code to build asynchronous processing pipelines, which is what we have been talking about, right? We'll learn how to do this. So declarative programming is a different way of thinking about the flow of data, different way of thinking about data itself. And it is, it's actually, a lot of people don't know this. It's integrated to Java, okay? It's, there is a flow interface in Java. There is an interface in Java called Flow. Okay, it's kind of built into, I think, Java 9. So it's been around for a while. Java doesn't provide the implementation. It provides just the interface. And the reason for it providing the interface is they noticed that there were a lot of these libraries which were using which are using these reactive programming paradigms and they wanted to standardize it right so java doesn't tell you uh java just tells you how to how to do reactive but then it doesn't give you the implementation you're going to have to go to these one of these libraries okay so i was talking about how java has the flow interface baked into it so it allows you to interact between multiple libraries but to be honest, the reality, it hasn't quite worked out that way, right? Nobody uses the flow interfaces directly. Okay, you don't use the interface that comes with Java, right? They have this kind of like publish subscribe interfaces, but nobody uses them directly. You use something else. I'm going to talk about that in just a bit. So I talked about how reactive programming needs to click and has a, a learning curve. I have an important disclaimer to make here. Reactive programming is probably not worth it for small projects. If you're a very simple project, simple calling the database, not a huge scale, you're probably not going to need it. You probably shouldn't do it. The thing about reactive programming is there is a little bit of a, a learning curve that I talked about. 
And there's a little bit of an extra effort required in getting things going for Reactive, right? And the benefits of that grow as the size of your project grows, as your users scale, as your application scales. Then at a certain point, there's a tipping point. And after that, like you will, you will be glad you went reactive. But up until the tipping point, you are going to take on an overhead without a significant benefit. Okay. The benefit only shows up when the size grows, right? Just keep that in mind. Reactive is not a solution for everything. So I also mentioned about how it needs to click, right? The reason I say this is because reactive programming is familiar, yet it's different. Okay. If you look at reactive programming, a lot of things will seem very familiar to you. If you look at the code, if I show you the code, a lot of things will seem familiar and it'll look similar to something else you probably already know, which is collection streams, right? So what we're going to do is we are now going to take a little bit of a detour. We'll take a detour and we will do some work with Java streams. Okay. Not related to Reactive at all, but I want to set the stage because there is a very interesting paddle that happens between Java streams, and that's what helped me click in my mind what Reactive programming is and how to use it. So I'm going to help you go through that same journey by drawing that paddle, but we're going to have to exercise our mind. We'll warm up our mind a little bit by doing a couple of, a few exercises with Java streams, and then you will immediately make the jump to Reactive programming and you will see how easy the transition is.